something I've been trying to be a little better at lately is produce, continuing to produce some videos, just offering some advice and knowledge on things around the farm so that you guys can do it on your own. And you know, if you are trying to get into beekeeping, I would suggest everybody that has a farm get into beekeeping. Bees are, you know, they're, they help with your cross pollination. They will uh, dramatically improve your, your productivity. If you have uh, several hives on your farm, you can't just do one hive. You have to do at least two hives. If you could build yourself up to three or four, that would be uh, ideal, even on a small property. Uh, getting out to you know a property our size where you might be having different areas of grow zones, you may actually need to increase it even more on top of that. You might want to have uh, s several apiaries throughout your property where you have at least four hives. Anyway, I get my hives from Hoover Hives. I love these hives because they're um, they're coated in beeswax. They're all natural. It's just and, and I love the looks of the hives. They're very well made. Um, and I apologize for the rooster. We're, we're getting ready to do something with them. But anyway, these hives are fantastic hives. I love them. You can get 5% off um, on the Galena Hives website, uh, Galena Farms website. Galena Farms makes Hoover Hives, uh, Newbie. They make a lot of different hives and, and they have a lot of different products. You can get 5% off by putting in Yanasa TV, one word, all caps. Um, but anyway, I wanted to show you guys, I put together this video uh, putting a hive together because when you order a hive, if you've never done anything before with beehive, um, you're going to get a box and that box doesn't necessarily come with a ton of instructions. And so, you, but you've got to be able to put all of these hives together. They don't come like this. You can get them pre-assembled, but it's really not worth the money. It's, it's pretty easy to do. Um, a lot of it is self-explanatory. Some of it you you may not know and be confused on. So I'm gonna run through some of the different parts of these hives and just kind of show you how they, they work. Okay, so let's take a look inside this box here. This is your queen excluder. You'll put this between your brood box and your super boxes. You're not gonna need this while you're building the hive, so you could just set it aside for now. Uh, I did not mean to set it, <laughs> set it aside that way. The next thing you'll find in here are your foundations. These are the supers. So they're a lot smaller. Your super boxes are going to be um, just smaller in size than your brood boxes. And that makes it easier for you to handle when they're full of honey. Um, I use, I believe this is an eight frame. So I'm gonna be building eight frames for each box. If you go up to a 10 frame, I'm actually using a 10 frame box. So when you go up to the 10 frame boxes, they can become extraordinarily heavy when they're full of honey. So um, being in shape is necessary during bee season. Now these are um, entrance reducers. And basically when you build the hive, you'll have this piece here, which you can use to either create a small entrance into the hive or a bit of a larger entrance. I'm gonna do a bit of a larger entrance on both of my hives. And then this will actually protect the hive from uh, things like rodents and stuff. So you can put this on there and it just kind of reduces the size even more, um, just so that the bees can get through. These are the frame tops. Somewhere in here we'll find some frame bottoms. Some frame bottoms are similar, except for they just don't extend out quite as far. And the top has the little lip for hanging the frame. And then you've got your frame sides. We've got both the super sides and the brood box sides. I believe that is a brood box right there. And the super size is going to be a little bit smaller. So we'll take these out and just separate them. You're gonna to wanna to kind of set up an assembly line for your frames where you've got all your tops in one place, all your bottoms in another place, and then of course your, your brood and your um, super sides in their respective piles so that you could just kind of reach for these and pop them together as you go. This is your hive bottom. Um, they, different hives have different types of foundations and I've seen some pretty nice foundations but I, I do like, again, I like kind of going with the natural wood and uh, this one's got, the, the, it's covered in beeswax for um, preservation purposes. 
I just like the way that they do these. Um, but they do Hoover hives. You can get different types of bottoms depending on what kind of features you're looking for. The bottoms that I get are the basic bottoms for the hives. Okay, so your brood boxes are going to be the deeper boxes. And these Hoover hives, the ones that I'm using, have two deep boxes, brood boxes, and then they have one super box on the top of the hive. I will eventually add to my super boxes. The super boxes are typically where you would want to have your, um, your honey that you're, you're keeping and you want to retain the brood boxes for the bees. I may eventually separate out the brood boxes and do um, take the two hives I have and turn them into six hives. Just have a single brood box and multiple super boxes. But starting out, I wanted to give myself the best chances. So I'm going to give myself two brood boxes on each hive. That way, I can make sure that I'm maintaining a very healthy hive at the very beginning with plenty of room for expansion. Um, but down the road, if, if things are going well, I may end up separating out my brood boxes, getting more super boxes, and just simply building more hives. I did find on the Galena Farms website that it's cheaper to just, if you're going to build a hive, to just buy a hive kit. Uh, then try and buy the different pieces, different brood boxes, etc. But you can buy all of the different boxes and pieces individually if you're looking to add on to the hive. We've got our super boxes. Now the last time I put these hives together, I used a rubber mallet. This time I'm going to try and build them without using the rubber mallet and use a clamp to just kind of slowly press the wood together. I felt like the rubber mallet was actually not the best choice. Make sure that you put them together right so that your handles are on the outside. The other trick to building hives is that you have to keep the hive perfectly square, which I think could prove to be a little tricky. We'll make sure it's square before we put on the top side. Just push the tops in just a little bit to hold it in place. Now I'm going to do the bottom. I'm just going to work it back and forth. It did pretty good. It's very square. I think if you if you do these hives correctly, they're going to end up being square. The dovetails fit nice and tight. You'll notice as you push these together that you're going to get some wax that starts to pop up in some places. That's perfectly fine. Um, I may melt some of that wax into the cracks, but. For the most part, I think this hive is pretty tight. I'm going to go ahead and press the other boxes together, and then I'll come back at the end and put some brass nails in there to hold the dovetails in place. So the one thing I don't like is that they give you all the different size nails in one bag. So you've got small nails, large nails, and you've kind of got to have to 
go through and organize them yourself before you get started, otherwise you're going to be searching for nails the entire time you're doing this. Now, one of our subscribers in my last video suggested that it's better to use screws, and it probably is better to use screws. You can buy screws uh, specifically for beehives, but I have found that the wax the, that are on the Hoover hives actually hold the hives together pretty good. So I'm going to work on my super first. Basically all there is to it. Just have your, uh, your top, your bottom, your sides, and then you nail them together. Once you do that, the form stays in there like so. Got ten of these supers, and then I've got the, uh, the brood forms to do. Okay, so I have completed my first ten for the super box. And again, the super box is just a little smaller. This is typically where you're going to get your honey from. You would normally leave your brood boxes alone. Um, I am going to go ahead and set these aside and then I've got to do 20 for the two brood boxes. So this is a very time consuming process but it's totally worth it. Once you get these bees set up and the bees are doing all the work for you and making you some honey, it just it tastes so much better when, when it's free and somebody else is doing the work. So. I'm going to set these aside and start on the next half part. I feel like I need some music. Springtime is always a busy time on the ranch. Yesterday I spent the, the remainder of the day listening to music, building those frames for brood boxes while also managing some fires outside. Um, and I never got around to finishing this, so the last thing that I, I have to do before I can assemble all of this back together is I need to nail my, uh, my frame together. And I saved this for last because uh, it's going to take me a little more time to do this. The last time I did this, I just went ahead and drove the nails straight into it, and I had a couple splits. I wasn't very happy with that. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to pre-drill my nail holes, and then I'll put the nails in. That way I can avoid splitting any of the wood. Just need to put this thing together. Start with the base and our 
first brood box. And we need to go ahead and install our opening. I was going to try and use the larger opening here. So you can see I went with the larger slot for the hive opening there. Now this is supposed to slide on there somehow. So I screwed these up just a little bit higher so that I could easily slide this up in there, take it in and out. This will prevent some larger moths and stuff from being able to climb up into the hive, I believe. I think that's what it is. It also protects from rodents being able to get in there. So stay tuned for more uh, videos on hives. I'm going to be putting together a video on how to build a hurricane-proof, ant-proof uh, hive stand. And then we'll also be set setting up the area around the hive so that the bees have water and that they have uh, some flower sources right there next to the hive. So I'm gonna be doing all of that, hopefully within the next couple weeks so I can go ahead and get a nuke and introduce it to our hive because it's, you know, it's the season to get those bees started. And um, this is a project that I've been wanting to do for years. I love bees and I'm very excited about doing this. And I'm gonna take you guys along for the journey and create some videos just on everything that I'm doing with these hives so that maybe you could learn a little bit as well. And at some point here, I will be doing a video on how to properly butcher a rooster.